Hey guys, Proper English here. Last time I taught you about OR gates and NOR gates, and today I'm going to teach you about XOR and XNOR gates. The X stands for exclusive, and you're going to understand what that means when we take a look at the truth table. Before we get into this, I want to remind you, when you're watching these tutorials, what I want you to focus on is how things are working. So I'm showing you some gate designs, and, and it's good to, to know these designs, but it's more important to understand how they work. Right, because there are better gates, there are more efficient gates. These are just ones that will really show you the concepts. And once you understand the concepts, you can take those and apply them uh, to build your own gates and fit them into what you need, into a particular area, or modify them to do something extra. And, uh, and yeah, so let's get started. So let's start off by taking a look at the truth table for an XOR gate. So in an XOR gate, it's exclusively OR. That means the output will be on when only one of the inputs is on. So if both A and B are off, the output's off. If just B is on, the output is on. If just A is on, the output's on. But if A and B are on, the output's off. And let's take a look at how you might implement this in a redstone circuit. So what I've got here is a very basic XOR gate. This is one that you might have seen before. It's the first one that a lot of people learn. And so right now, when both inputs are off, the output's off. If I, uh, if I turn one on, the output's on. If I turn the other one on, the output's on. And now, if I turn them both on, the output's going to be off. And, uh, and so let's take a look at how this works. We can deconstruct it a little bit. So what I've got here is an OR gate. And you might expect in an XOR gate that somewhere in there there's going to be an OR gate. You know, it's in the name. Well, it just looks a little more complicated because there's a double inversion here. But this is an OR gate. We're, we're going to use this, uh, this double inversion to uh, help get that X part of the XOR gate. So right now, they're both off, both inputs and uh, the output's off. If I turn one of them on, the output's on. I can do the same thing with the other input, the output's on. Now when they're both on, it's an OR gate, so the output is on. But we don't want that, we want XOR. So let's take a look at the last row of the, uh, the truth table. If A and B are on, the output's off. And I just kind of gave away what we're going to do there. We're going to throw in an AND gate. And it's pretty easy to add in here. We put a block there. We can uh, put a block there. Then we toss a block in between the two torches, a torch, and a piece of wire. And there you go. This is an XOR gate. And you can see now the output is off. And so let's take a look at how this whole thing works. So we'll start off with 0, 0 as the input. Both are off. It's an OR gate right now because the AND gate isn't, isn't functioning. And, uh, and you see that in an OR gate, the output is going to be off. Now, uh, if I turn one input on, the OR gate uh, part of the XOR is still functioning. Um, just one uh, input, well, it's going to be on. Now, we can do the same thing with the other one. Still the OR gate part of the XOR functioning. But now, if I turn them both on, suddenly the AND gate turns on, and it turns these torches off, and, and it changes the last row of that truth table, so it's an XOR. If we didn't have this AND gate here, it would be on. And it's that easy. Not too bad, right? So next, we're going to take a look at an XNOR gate, which is the logical inverse of an XOR. So let's go for that. So let's take a look at the truth table for an XNOR gate. XNOR is exclusively not OR. So, uh, so when the inputs are the same, the output's going to be on. And, uh, and so you can see that when both inputs are off, the output's on. If the inputs are different, the output is going to be off. And when the inputs are the same, when they're both on, the output is on. And let's take a look at how I modified the XOR gate that I showed you to be an XNOR. And you can see the main thing I did was I took this torch out of here and replaced it with wire and threw a repeater on the input up here. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so this is an XNOR gate. Now let's take a look at that. So right now, both of the, uh, the inputs are off. The output is on. 
when I turn one on, the output's off. I can turn the other one on, the output's off. But now, when they're both on, the output's on. And let's deconstruct this, and uh, just like I did for the, uh, the XOR gate, and see how it works. So what I've got here is a NOR gate, okay? And, uh, and yeah, so just like the XOR had an OR gate in it, the XNOR has a NOR gate in it. And you can see, input off, input off, output is on. Now, when I turn one on, the output's off. That's because this wire up here is getting powered and the, uh, the torch is off now. I can do the, uh, the same thing with this other input. The torch is getting powered down here now and, uh, and it, the output's off. And so now, if they're both on, it's getting powered in two places and, yeah, it's still off. So how do we add the X function to the X NOR gate? And, uh, and we're going to look at this last row of the truth table again. And you can see now when A and B are on, the output needs to be on. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to throw in an AND gate. And so that's what I've got here. So I've got, oh, there, <laughs> one is already on. So now uh, they're both off, the output is off. If I put one on, the output's off. I can do the same thing with the other one, the output's still off. And now when they're both on, the output's on because it's an AND gate. Um, this torch and this torch are both getting powered, so they're not stopping this torch from outputting an on. Okay? So let's take a look at how that works in the X NOR gate. And so, uh, so yeah, right now, both inputs are off, and this NOR gate here is being allowed to function. But if I turn either one of them on, it's stopping the, uh, the NOR gate from functioning. So right now, it's stopping it from up, up above. Okay, that, that, uh, that repeater is powering this wire and turns it off. Now, if I do the other one, it's off because now it's getting powered from this torch over here. It's keeping the output off. But now, what I can do is I can turn that one on, and the AND gate part of the XNOR turns on, and the output's on. And there you go. That's how you build an XNOR gate. That's how an XNOR gate works. So now you've learned how an XOR gate works and how an XNOR gate works, and, uh, and you've seen an example of, of each of those gates. There are, I mean, there are so many designs you can make. I mean, it's, it's really, really endless. And, um, and I've just shown you one today. I'm going to provide a world download so you can play with this, this particular, uh, particular design and look at the truth tables and, and you know, go through it all. But if you want to see more designs, there are a couple of places that you can look. One great reference is a thread by, by Magix on Minecraft form, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Another great place that you can go is if you come onto the RDF build server and warp to the plot o logic, which I'll, uh, I'll write down what the warp is, um, you can see all different types of gates you'll see I mean you'll see some much more complex things too and you can check that out and see tons of different designs and even learn a little bit of the history of some of the gates and that's that's another great resource so those two are uh, are are resources that I would highly recommend for learning different gate designs I'd also recommend that you play around with these ideas and see what you can come up with on your own so I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed watching this and I'll see you guys next time